So, are there any questions? I mean, there are a lot of people who signed up for interviews, you know. I mean, you can ask the questions now, huh? You want to see me alone, huh? I mean, most of the questions you ask, you know, I mean, they, they don't need to be asked in private. They're not really, you know, they're not really that private, you know, these questions, yeah? The basic questions, you know, that most of you, you know, you will be surprised that every one of you has the same problems. <laughs> so better ask the questions then, and then don't bother, the, don't bother me, yeah? Yeah. Can I do my uh, focus on the sensation on the body? Then the, when the breath becomes stronger, yeah. can I do that? Of course you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it try, you know, I mean in the beginning, why don't you try put with breathing in and do with breathing out? That, that is easy in the beginning until, you know, the Buddha falls away, yeah? And then you keep on the breath, yeah? Of course you can do all these things, you know? I mean, we can use three or four crutches, you know? But in the end, you know, there should be only remaining one crutch, yeah? And the more often you switch between, you know, the breath, you know, and the sensation of the body, I mean, the less you become, you know, the, the less you become focused on one point. Of course you can do it, you know. I mean, it's better than, than thinking. Yeah? Yeah? But just know that in the end, you know, have one crutch. Yeah? So that means one point of observance, yeah? Be it the breath or be it the buddha, yeah? And in the beginning you can do put breathing in, do breathing out, yeah? And see how that works, yeah? Maybe then the breath becomes clearer until the buddha falls away. Because in the end, once we get concentrated, we don't want to concentrate on two objects. Yeah? Try it out, yeah? <clears throat> Another question. There was one in the back. No? Um, same thing, similar question. Yeah, yeah. Breathing. Subtle breathing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I'm I'm breathing my breath softer. I know I'm breathing. I also feel my body, my whole body hardening. That's what I can see. Hardening? How can the body hardening? It will be soft. It should disappear when the breath becomes subtle. And, yeah? Actually, you know, what happens, you know, when the, when the breath becomes subtle, the knowing becomes stronger. Yeah? It becomes much, much clearer than the feeling of the breath at the tip of the nose, yeah? I mean, if the breath, you know, if you have the feeling the breath disappears, but I, I said that already two or three times, yeah? Then you lose your interest in the breath. That's why the breath disappears, not because it's becoming subtle, because you lose your interest in the breath, because it becomes boring. Ah, oh, not again, yeah, oh, this breath, oh, yeah? That's where you lose your interest, yeah? Actually, what happens, you know, when you're really interested in the breath? I mean, in the beginning you feel it, and then the breath really becomes subtle, yeah? And once the breath becomes subtle, the knowingness of breathing in and of breathing out becomes much clearer than any kind of feeling you had before. That is the proper way of practice, yeah? So if your breath disappears, that means your interest disappears, yeah? And what happens then is when the, when the knowingness of the breath becomes stronger and stronger, the knowingness of the body becomes less and less and less until there's no more body anymore, yeah? 
That's what should happen, you know, when you practice correctly. Anything else, then you know it's going wrong. <laughs> okay? Understood? Clear? Huh? Oh, I lost my breath. <laughs> huh? No, you lost the interest in the breath. It's not so easy, you know. And you get clearer, you know, the knowingness. Yeah? I mean, you, you will get, you know, once in knowingness, that's what we develop. We want to develop the sati, that is the knowingness. Yeah? That's the whole purpose of the training. Yeah? Observing the breath, knowing the breath goes in, knowing that the breath goes out, knowing the breath is deep, knowing that the breath is shallow, knowing that the in-breath is short, knowing that the out-breath is long. That's the knowingness that we want to develop. And the knowingness, through each iteration, the knowingness becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. Yeah? And the breath becomes more subtle and the feeling of the breath becomes weaker and weaker. And that's when we do it correctly. And then the feeling, of course there will be sometimes, you know, the feeling when it just changes from, from the feeling of the, at the tip of the nose, then we will feel the whole body breathing, yeah? They can hold on for a while, but the knowingness still gets stronger. And then the body disappears. Until most of the time there's only this part, you know. I mean, you don't feel your legs, you don't feel your head, you don't feel your shoulders, you don't feel your hands. They all disappear. Because the concentration becomes so strong that the chitta doesn't even have time, you know, to feel the information of the body. Hmm? To, to feel all the feelings, yeah. And sometimes, you know, it can happen, you know, that you get, yeah, that you think you sit crooked, yeah. I mean, once the concentration is becoming so strong that, that the chitta cannot go out to, and there are lots of position, you know, to give you the right sitting position, yeah. Then you have the feeling that your head is on the floor. Happened to me quite often, or that I was leaning over. Then I opened my eyes and I was sitting completely straight, yeah. It's strong information that the chitta gathers because it doesn't have all the, all the sitting positions, all the information of the body. It doesn't have time to go there anymore. That means actually our concentration is much stronger. Yeah? So the information about the body is getting less and less and less until the body completely disappears. Most of the time, you know, in the end phase, before it becomes up and as a man, it's only there, you know, where the, exactly where the chitta is. And everything else we don't feel anymore. That is the correct way of practice, yeah? I mean, write it behind your ears. We say that in German, you know, remember it very well. Hmm? In German we say, write it behind your ears, you know, but, yeah, remember it very well, yeah? Remember this, you know, that is the correct way of practice, yeah? Everything else goes wrong, yeah? And then you don't need to ask any questions if you remember that, yeah? And you don't need to come for interviews, yes? <laughs> yeah? <clears throat> yeah? We are doing samatha. That's right, that is samatha. Calm meditation, we don't contemplate. I mean, you haven't been here for yesterday? Or the day before? You did, but you didn't listen. <laughs> Maybe you were fast asleep. Once we get out of samatha, Yeah? Then we go into vipassana. Once a mind, you know, when you come out, you will come out sooner or later, and most of the time you will come out so soon, you know, that you feel sorry that you came out already. Because samatha, you know, the calmness when you don't feel your body anymore, I mean, that's where you're most peaceful. And you don't even want to leave that stage. And then this thought comes in, I don't really want to leave that. I can sit there for hours. And then you're actually out already. Yeah? And when you feel concentrated enough, then you can do vipassana. And vipassana is, you know, focusing on one object, yeah? Of your body. The body hair, the hair of the, the, hair of the head, or your teeth, or your nails, or whatever, yeah? 
the outside, yeah? All, that, all of the 32 parts. Take one of the 32 parts and concentrate on just one part. Just like we do with samatha until this part appears in, your, in front of your inner eyes. And then you start to, you know, to, to dissect it or do whatever you want to do with it. Okay? Understood? Clear? Samatha, vipassana are two different things that we don't, and listen very well, that we don't mix up. The only investigation that is allowed during samatha is investigation of pain. Remember that? Now, yeah, don't forget it. If you mix it up, you will have no, you know, I mean, you will not advance in the samatha and you will not advance in the vipassana because you just mix up, you know. Because the mind is not interested, it goes to vipassana, once the mind is, you know, uh, let's do samatha again, then vipassana again, and you don't get any results, yeah? And you practice for 20 years and no results are coming up. And that's why it is. When you do vipassana, you do vipassana. When you do samatha, you do samatha. And you don't mix them up, yeah? Samatha is calm meditation, to, to calm the mind, to concentrate the mind. Vipassana is ne, inside meditation, you know, to understand the nature of the object that you observe. Yeah. Okay? Understood? Clear? <laughs> wow. You have uh, about 20, yeah, 20 seconds. <laughs> Finished. <laughs> of course. We go to Vipassana after Samatha. Once the mind is calm, once the mind is concentrated and you could stay, you know, 10 minutes on your object without getting diverted by any kind of thoughts and memories, then you can do Vipassana. I thought I said it clearly. I thought I said it clearly. I mean, have you been here, you know, all these three or four days, or were you just? You always run into Goenka. Yeah, I mean that. What I mean, Goenka, you know, I mean it, it's not bad, you know. I mean, I like people, you know, who come from Goenka. But what I don't like is their mixture of samatha and vipassana. Yeah. But I mean, they, at least they, they have a discipline, you know. When they come to a monastery, they, at least they can sit and walk for ten hours. Yeah. That's good, yeah? The rest, you know, I mean, we sort out. Yeah? <laughs> okay? Stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs>